So I'm Christy and I'm a therapist here at Kurt Psychology Consulting and here we're talk we're here to talk about John's experience with um, selective mutism and how medication played a role in his treatment. So I'm Jonathan. Um, I'm a past uh, patient of Dr. Kurtz. I started working with him when I was five back in 2001. Um, I started taking medication when I was eight, probably in second or third grade. Okay, so you started when you were eight, and did you start treatment with him before that point? I started treatment with him when I was five in uh, March of my kindergarten year. And what was that? So, so you started medication about it, about a couple of years into working with him. Yes. And what was it like for you? What did it feel like when you when you started with, with medication? In adjunction to the treatment. So. Um, when we were originally deciding whether or not they should, we should put me on medication, mm -hmm. um, it was it was a pretty new thing at the time. Most times they didn't put kids on antidepressants for anxiety, mm -hmm. and there wasn't much research behind it. Um, but we started me off on like a really small dose, and um, it worked out to be a pretty tremendous help when I was in school, when I was out in public. Um, it felt almost as if like. Uh, there's weight was lifted off my off my shoulders. Um, my mom remembers me telling her that I just didn't feel so bunched up inside anymore when I came when I went to school. Um, I did stop and start a few times uh, with the medication. Um, so you stopped and started a few times. What um, what was it like when you would like stop and then go back on again? Do you remember that? Should I say that, um, like, I don't know if it was like the best thing for me to stop and start? Or yeah, you can be honest. I want you to be 100% honest. I don't even know how we decided when to stop and start. Okay, so you weren't really aware of that? It's well, I knew, but... But like why you decided to do why. that? Like I was better, but like, I don't know what that means. Mm. So you would start to feel like you were doing better, not even really sure what that means go off of it and then something would trigger to, to feel the need for that again. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember at what points you went off and on or you don't? So most of the times we started during like transition periods. Mm -hmm. So after the first time uh, when I was transitioning to elementary school um, and we stopped after like third or fourth grade and then I started again in sixth grade going into middle school. And then, it's a big transition. Yeah. yeah. And then I stopped. And then I started up again, um, maybe in like 10th grade when I was having a little bit of difficulties. And that, um, I didn't stay on for that long. But then when I was going into college, I then started up again. Um, I'm not sure what it would have been different if uh, instead I just was on medication ever since. Mm -hmm. I started when I was eight. But uh, it works different for every person. Yeah. And how do you feel, like you said it kind of made you feel like things were, like you were less bunched up inside and was there any, is there any other way you would describe, like even when you were older, like in 12th grade, during that transition probably to college, yeah. how, how it affected, how it affected you? Yeah. So it really felt like I was easier, it was easier for me to uh, just be out in public and be able to socialize. Um, I like to say that it felt like it, the medicine helps to take down the walls that my anxiety and selective mutism tries to build up. Mm -hmm. And uh, medication doesn't get rid of all of the anxiety, but it definitely helps a lot. That's great. Were there any like downsides to taking it that you could think of? I didn't really have any downsides to it. There weren't really any side effects. I remember when I was little, we told the teacher that uh, when I was starting it that I might feel drowsy or something. But they were all very accommodating about it, and like, um, if I needed to take a nap in school during the day, they were they were okay with it. But that never really happened. Um, when I was older, when I started taking it, um, for the first few weeks, I would get I could get like really jittery, mm -hmm. like I could get spooked easily. So if someone like uh, uh, opened the door quickly or something, I would get. Startled. Like, like, yeah. But that, that was like for the first two weeks, and then after that, I, I didn't have any side effects, and I'm currently on the medication. Um, I don't experience any side effects to it. I take it every morning. 
That's great. So maybe, yeah, sometimes when you're starting, that makes sense that when you're starting something new, sometimes like your body's adjusting to it and then you kind of level out. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and you said, so now you're on it. So what are you like doing today? What are you in school? Are you? So I am a sophomore in college up in Massachusetts. Um, so four hours away from home. Um, my parents were pretty worried when I was going off doing that, but it's actually worked out pretty well. Um, I have plenty of friends. Uh, what do you say? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, whatever you want to share. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm pretty involved in school. Um, I'm involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, I can participate in class, and we do presentations all the time. I'm in the business school. That's something that we have to learn how to do. And, um, it goes pretty well. That's great. Yeah, that's what Dr. Chris was just saying. So you're in, in business school and your school's like one of the top schools for entrepreneurship and business. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. So you said like there wasn't really any side effects. Do, is it something that you would tell people that you're on medication or like share with people that are close to you or is it something that you keep to yourself? I didn't really tell anybody unless it like came up in conversation and that didn't happen too often. Mm -hmm. um, Whenever I would go to the doctor and they asked you, like, are you on any new medications, I would, of course, tell them. Mm -hmm. um, only once, when I was in college, it came up in conversation, and um, I told some girl... Only once when I was in college, I had come up in conversation, and I told one of my friends, and I s told her that I was taking medication, and um, that was kind of like the first time I ever did it, and... Um, the way she responded was like, what happens if you're not medicated? Mm -hmm. And when she said that, it, it kind of seemed like um, I needed the medication to survive, or like if I wasn't taking the medication, I wouldn't be able to function. Mm -hmm. And that's not really how it works. And um, I don't think a lot of people really understand how the medication works, and that's just, it's like a, a support. Um, it helps to make you not uh, as anxious. Uh, that makes sense that it helps to make you feel less anxious like you were saying like it takes the wall down yeah I'm just thinking about how to phrase this mm -hmm. okay so the medication kind of like lowers the threshold of when you start to feel anxiety so instead of mm -hmm. um, maybe you feeling anxiety normally with like six or seven people in a room it'll bring it all the way up to like a hundred or something like that. Got it. So it's kind of like, like your like fire alarm won't go off. Yeah. Unless, like it'll go off in less situations. It tries to limit the false alarms. Okay, false alarms and you're able to tolerate more yeah. situations that might have been harder without it. Yeah. Do you remember back at all, because we were obviously a lot younger, was it, can you, do you remember if that was like the same feeling back then or you don't really have, or you don't really remember that? Like the so you're like so like you're saying that the the medication kind of helped to lower that wall with anxiety or have less false alarms was it is it the same thing when you were younger? Yeah, it was the same yeah. thing when I was younger and um, when I was really young, I wouldn't like even want to go into school and um, just sitting in the classroom was pretty difficult. But I, when I started taking the medication, um, it made me more comfortable to even just sit there. And then gradually, it was like be able to participate, be able to outside your recess and things like that that's great was it and I'm curious too was because I know you started with Dr. Hertz when you were in kindergarten and they said you started the medication in second grade have you always also been um like in some kind of therapy with the medication or has like kind of how has that played a role when you started the medication you were still working with Dr. Hertz at that time yeah all the times when I was on medication I was working with Dr. Hertz as well okay it was never separate it was never just one or the other. It was, yeah. like you said, it was kind of like that extra support on top of also the practice that yeah. you were doing with him. Yeah. Both were definitely very important. Yeah. Which is what, yeah, which to your experience and the research and everything shows too. So it's, I'm so happy that you can share that. Um, and like when you talk about, I'm curious, you know, this might not be as much related to medication, but when you talk about like those false alarms and having 
those less like what when that does happen kind of what is that like for you for parents that are like wondering about like what their kids are actually feeling when they like they feel like they can't speak or they go out in public and they get really really anxious I like to think of it as like um, I know a lot of people are scared of like snakes just imagine that um, all those people that they see are just snakes to you snakes. and like these snakes are trying to jump out at you and you get you're getting spooked it's the same kind of false alarm that they're getting mm, like when somebody asks you to speak it's like a snake just jumped out in your face yeah yeah that would be really frightening yeah. <laughs> I'd probably react worse than a kid with selective mutism is reacting if that happened <laughs> yeah that's a good analogy I like that this is I think is an important one do you ever like did you ever feel like medicine, like taking medicine was a cop out or has that ever, have you ever felt like that in your life? When I was little, I it definitely wasn't something that I thought about. It was just like, this was part of the treatment and I knew it was something that was going to help me. So I wanted to do it. And your, and your parents told you that, what, that you were taking it. Yes. They were very transparent about it. Yeah. I knew that it was medication to help my anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, they ended up making the decision about whether or not I should take it. But, mm -hmm. um, they told me uh, all about it, and um, when I was older, like taking it again in college, I kind of like thought about it. But um, if someone has diabetes and they like they're not producing enough insulin, um, that's you have to take medication for that. So mm -hmm. if anxiety, uh, you're imbalanced in brain chemicals. It's kind of like the same thing. You're taking these medications to to help your body process these imbalances. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, um, it's supporting you in a way yeah. that's helpful. Exactly. And it's, yeah, it's not, I agree with you that it's not just like, I'm like what you said earlier made a lot of sense. Like it's not just, I'm relying on the medication to be functional. Kind yeah. of like that girl, one of your friends in college asked you, it's not about that. It's that the medication is like extra support to help you be, to support you in, in approaching things that might be hard at other times that you yeah. still might be able to do but you'd be uncomfortable during okay. them is that right yeah okay so i'm hearing you correctly um has anybody so besides that friend in college who kind of asked you that question has anybody ever given you a hard time or like made you feel bad about no I, doing, i've only it? had good experiences with it that's um, good yeah that's great I think there's a lot of different fears around like putting a young child on medication, you know? Yeah. Like, are there side effects? That's like one of the big questions. And for you, you're saying that maybe the only thing was that you might have been a little drowsy and that didn't even really happen. Yeah. And just there's, there's so many different types of medications. I would say if one medication you are getting side effects from, you can always just try another. There are so many different types. There's so many different flavors that you can try. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, did they? Did you take a liquid form of it, or how did they do it when you were a kid? I took a pill form. It was okay. a tiny pill. Okay, because I know now there's so many different ways. And like you're saying, so sometimes it can kind of be like a trial and error process yeah. of figuring out what works for you with that, like you said, like balancing that imbalance yeah. for you, because each person is different. When I was younger, we, really, we kind of like stuck to one dosage and then I started, like, as I got older, I started getting uh, larger dosages. When I started in college, it took about, like, two months to find what dosage was was good enough. Mm -hmm. um, we started from 20, went to 30, 40, and I ended up with 60 milligrams. But um, it depends, really, for everybody, weight, height, all those things. A lot of different factors, yeah. for sure. And not only, like, those, like, physical things that you just pointed out, but it seems also, like... Like different points where you were you said the word transitions which makes a lot of sense yeah it depends on like what you're experiencing in the moment mm -hmm. and how those are going to affect your your like your reaction or like your your false alarms kind of thing yeah so it depends like what you're experiencing in the moment and how those uh, how the different medications will affect like your, the thresholds when you start to feel anxiety. The thresholds, and I'm sure like thresholds are different through a transition where things are more ambiguous versus when things are kind of more steady and routine. Yeah, like the difference between just being in fifth grade and having a just like the difference of just being in fifth grade and going through the day and 
having next year going to sixth grade, going to much larger school, or things like that. Yeah, much larger school and middle school, you're changing classes, you have different teachers. Yeah. Changing all those variables throughout the day could be a lot harder. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, do you think that you will always take medication, like for the rest of your life, or do you think that eventually you won't need it? I don't really know. It's mm -hmm. something that me and my doctor will have to discuss, mm -hmm. but um, I don't um, I don't think I will be on it for the rest of my life, um, but I really, I don't know, and I couldn't really say. Yeah, that makes sense. How would you know? It's the future. <laughs> yeah, and, and even if you were on it, I think like what you said, it's that it's helping you to balance, balance yeah. yourself out, and so why, you know, why would it be a problem even if you were? Yeah. I don't I don't see a problem either way, it's just, it's individual for every situation about what's best. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For every situation for each person and for every situation in your life of, yeah. you know, they're like finishing college and going on to do other things. There's always going to be like those transition points, yeah. which are hard for some with anxiety, but also hard for anybody yeah. to go through. So what are your like um, relationships like now? with people, with adults, with professors, with friends? So I, I would say when I was little, I was uh, I was much more open to relationships with adults and like I would be very close with my teachers and stuff like that. Um, I was very much steered away from relationships with kids. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays I'm in college, it's, it's all, it's all come, what comes much easier to me. Um, I probably have, I have three or four really close friends that I see every day when I'm in college. Um, it's not about having 30, 50 friends that we say hello to all the time, but having a few close friends that um, know you well and understand. Um, most of my friends, most of my close friends know that I do have anxiety and I have like, problems um, going to parties and stuff like that. So if they do ask me to go, like they're always conscious of the fact and they know that when I say no, it's just I'm not in the mood or I am not comfortable doing it today or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's really great that you're able to communicate that so that people can understand. It, sometimes it's hard when you, when your anxiety is getting in the way, it seems like to not send the wrong message that your friends yeah. know where you're coming from. Yeah. If you're not exactly. ready to approach that battle today or that night, you know, yeah. at that party or something. That makes a lot of sense. It's great that you have that awareness that you can communicate that. Do you feel like you could have gotten where you are today or you would have been able to progress through if like medication was never in the picture? Or how do you think it would have changed things for you? I think it probably would have made the whole process um, slower. Um, especially like those high tense situations. I'm not sure um, how I would have reacted, uh, especially like the transition to college or the transition to middle school because those two periods were especially rough and having the medication as like a support, especially in college when my parents aren't there to help me out. It was definitely something that um, helped tremendously. And I'm not sure how I would have been different if, I, if it wasn't in the picture. Yeah, yeah, how could you know? But I like, you said like it, things would have taken a lot longer probably. Yeah, I and, think so. And maybe been a lot harder. Yeah. Like a lot more work and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to not have that support. It's almost like what you said about like having diabetes and if you don't have your insulin, like you're gonna yeah. be struggling a lot more than to give you that insulin and then feel balanced out. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, I feel like this has been really great. Is there anything else that you want to share at all that came up or that came to your mind? Yeah. yeah. I would say like the biggest thing is to like just do your research and um, don't really listen to like what friends or family is saying if they don't have any experience and they're just thinking of like what society thinks of it. It's not really a good way good way to gauge it. Just say listen to the doctors, um, go do research online. My mom thought about it for a long time before she did. I know a lot of family and friends were against it, but um, she did their, uh, looked at all these research studies that showed that there was um, an effect with 
children and anxiety and helping people out in general. Yeah, that's a really great point. I love that because, you know, we could sit, people can sit and say, you know, I'm against it or I'm for it or, you know, like you said, and like there's different norms and cultures and religions yeah. and society, but I love the term just do your research because that's where a lot of the evidence lies and, and evident in your experience too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one. You are not the only one, my friend, for sure. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.